So Larry and Luis, thank you for taking the time to talk to me and to explain uh, how Toyota do things uh, today. This is going to be very valuable for the students at Waterloo. Uh, the first uh, thing that I want to do is just to ask you to introduce yourselves uh, and describe your role at Toyota. I'm uh, Louis Almeida. I'm a manager at uh, Toyota. I've uh, been here for 25 years. Uh, my experience has been primarily in manufacturing and assembly. Uh, my current role uh, for about the last uh, year and a half has been as the manager of uh, TPS group and manufacturing skills uh, development. Uh, my group uh, has uh, TPS trainers and our role is to uh, train uh, the different levels of the organization on the tools for uh, TPS and how to apply those tools in their everyday job. Uh, this is Larry, he is one of our TPS certified trainers. Hi everyone, my name is Larry Edwards. I'm a pr uh, production group leader originally. I've been here 22 years. Uh, I joined the TPS team about a year ago and I'm uh, learning TPS. I'm in the process of being certified in TPS and uh, uh, my background uh, at TMMC is body shop. I've worked uh, all my working life and experience here at TMMC has been in the body shop. Thank you and uh, you've talked about TPS, the to Toyota production system. Can you describe what the main elements of that are? Yeah, so um, TPS is reducing costs by thoroughly uh, eliminating waste, which we call MUDA. The uh, main elements uh, we actually uh, constructed into a house, not an actual house, but uh, a symbolic house. So the uh, foundation of that house is standardized work. The two pillars that support the house is Just In Time and Jadoka, and the roof is uh, Continuous Improvement, Kaizen, and Teamwork. Those are the elements of the Toyota production system. Thank you, and, and what's unique about the Toyota production system? So, what makes it unique and what differs it from traditional uh, production system is our manufacturing method. Uh, we have a more dynamic method. We build to attack time, which is uh, the customer demand. And by doing so, we're able to make changes and to be flexible. Uh, we then follow the TPS principles that we just discussed uh, in the house. And by doing that, it exposes uh, problems um, and, and, uh, and mistakes in our system. And then from there, we then problem solve by using Kaizen. And as a result, waste is eliminated and costs are reduced. And when you do that, you make profit. One of, the, one of the strengths of our system is the respect for people and allowing the team members the opportunity to be engaged and make improvements to their process. Our team members are our best uh, asset. They know their job better than anyone else. So they're our best resource for improving their process and making things better. And it's creating that culture and having the respect that makes it work. Very important. So, can you explain just in time what is it is and how you apply it here? So, uh, just in time uh, refers to manufacturing and conveyance. It is what is needed, when it is needed, and in the exact amount needed. Um, it eliminates various mudas, so wastes, and enhances work efficiencies. And truly, it does. It just notifies us of problems with material flow. Um, we apply it here at TMMC through several concepts, one being continuous flow processing. So that's when we keep inventory low and uh, we produce uh, one piece at a time. Two, we, uh, we follow a pull system and introduce Kanban. So parts are pulled from earlier processes by ladder processes only as they are needed. Okay, um, we, we run to attack time, so we build to the customer demand, and we follow Hijunka, which is actually pronounced Hey Junka, uh, and that's leveling of volume and variety. It's Thank just you. in time. Thank you. Ultimately, it's about knowing how much you need to produce, 
making sure that you have the necessary parts to produce that amount, but not carrying extra parts and extra stock, and also making sure that when you use up a part, a new part is ordered. It's uh, much like uh, in, in a household. You don't go buying more than what you need in the uh, kitchen. If you buy too much, it either uh, spoils or, or you're paying out too much money. So you just want the right amount at the right time for what you need. Thank you. And uh, how's quality managed in the Toyota production system? What, what are the main elements that allow you to produce uh, the very reliable cars that you make? So we manage it through a concept called Jadoka. It's a concept which notifies us of problems with the process. The objective is to ensure we pass 100% good quality onto the next process or the next our customers. The main elements of Jadoka are fixed position stop. So that's a way for our team members to stop the line when abnormalities occur. Um, and we give the team members that ability. They have a brain, they're not robots, okay? Uh, two, we follow, uh, we have an and on system. So team members' ability to call for assistance when they, uh, when they need immediate action to problems. So it's call for help. And we, and number three, poke yokes. Uh, it's an error proofing, or error proofing device that will detect abnormalities. So we give our uh, automation, our equipment, the intelligence to be able to detect abnormalities. Uh, and when they do, they stop because we don't want outflow or defects. So, so building quality into the process, whether it's the team member or the equipment, if there's an abnormality that occurs, the team member has the ability to stop the line and correct it. And the equipment has the ability to detect it and stop until somebody goes in and confirms. Uh, our objective is to build it into the process, not to send the vehicles offline where they're going to be uh, repaired. Uh, repairing something after it's manufactured means that you have to disassemble parts and take things apart and that's just waste and ultimately you get a better product if you do it right the first time. Excellent. And uh, the seven mudas, that's part of what you do. Can you talk about the seven mudas for me? So in the TPS world, there are seven identified MUDAs. Let me see if I can keep them in order here. We actually have an acronym, uh, C, COM, WIP, as a way of recalling it. So uh, C, MUDA of correction. So anytime you have to revisit something, correct it, it costs money. And that's a waste. There's MUDA of conveyance. Um, ideally, you only want to move product once. So if you have to move it more than once, that's a MUDA. Uh, MUDA of overproduction, so producing more than, than is required. And that's the worst of all seven MUDAs because it incorporates uh, the other six into that one. So where am I? Oh, see, come motion. So MUDA of motion, uh, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory in a sense that if you have to reach over here to grab something, that takes time. You gotta walk over there to pick up a part that takes time. So we try to look at reducing the motion of the team member. Uh, w, wait, Muda of waiting. So um, ideally you want our cycle time to meet the tack time. And if there's, uh, if it doesn't meet, then there's a portion of waiting. And that's, that's uh, not efficient. There's Muda of inventory. Muda, uh, what happens there is uh, inventory actually masks problems and it creates uh, a longer lead time and costs money. So that's Muda of inventory. Uh, whip, P, processing. So Muda of processing and that is, uh, so we have standards and, in, and uh, those standards are there for a reason. And if you uh, have to um, do something above and beyond that standard, then it is it is wasteful to do so. Build to the standard. That makes sense. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think so. So we want to be as efficient as we can be, and obviously, muda meaning waste makes us inefficient. And ultimately, if we have a manufacturing process that's not efficient, 
those extra costs need to be incorporated into the price of the product. And a customer doesn't want to pay extra money for waste. So by being efficient, we're able to bring our uh, costs down, effectively reduce the cost, and improve uh, profit as an organization. So uh, eliminating waste is one of our biggest challenges, and we take a lot of effort to do that. Great. Uh, so what's your approach to managing people in the Toyota production system? How do you uh, manage them to work within the system? Uh, we manage our people by following the two main pillars of the Toyota way, which are continuous improvement and respect for people. We are never satisfied with where we're at, and we're always trying to make things better. We respect people and believe the success of Toyota is created by individual work and teamwork. <laughs> All team members at Toyota at every level are expected to use these two values in their daily work and interactions. And as I mentioned earlier, with that respect for people, it's allowing them to have a voice in uh, how we set up processes and what they do every day. So allowing team members the opportunity to Kaizen make improvements and be recognized for what they do, uh, it creates a better work environment and makes people better all around. Thank you. And, and Toyota are known for their involvement of employees in continuous improvement. Can you say a bit about how that works? You started to talk about it there, but could you say a bit more about how this works? So, okay, sorry. We always yeah. have, like I said, the uh, team members have the uh, ability to make suggestions and make in, uh, improvements in their process. We have uh, many different ways of doing that at uh, TMMC. It's part of our everyday culture. So. Team members on a daily basis make recommendations and improvements to their team leaders, to their group leaders, and we go through a process of making sure that uh, we uh, understand what the changes are and that they're beneficial and how we adopt those changes. And on top of that, we also have uh, programs like our suggestion program, which allow the team members to uh, fill out, uh, document how they want to make improvements. And, from that, it goes through uh, approval process, and team members get uh, rewarded and uh, compensated for making improvements uh, in the workplace. So uh, that whole respect and allowing team members to uh, make a difference uh, is a, a key part of the uh, Toyota production yeah. system. Yeah. So you know, when we identify Kaizen points, we involve our team members. I know Lewis touched upon it already, but. You know, we don't seek outside sources to come in and try to fix our problems. Uh, we give our team members a voice and, and we value their input. We consider them master craftsmen and experts of their processes. And uh, if there's something wrong, they will typically tell you. And they will tell you probably how to fix it, too. So they, you know, there is a vested interest to get involved, you know, um, because in most cases, it, it, it can have an impact in their daily working lives. So, thank the you. Best person to ask is the one doing the job. Absolutely. How does Toyota manage its supply chain? What are the main uh, aspects of the approach that's taken to that? So, Toyota began sharing TPS with its uh, suppliers in the 1990s. The thinking was if they fail, we fail. We rely uh, on their success for our success. It only makes sense to consider them an extension of our Toyota plan. Our customers don't care if it's a supplier part that has failed them because it's our logo that's on the car. So we have a dedicated team here at TMMC that works alongside our suppliers and they challenge them uh, and support them to improve in all aspects of TPS. It's a great working relationship with mutual respect and trust. Thank you. So we view our suppliers as our partners. We're the supplier successful, we're successful. As a TPS group here, sometimes we do work with suppliers. Uh, we either go to uh, their plants or we have the suppliers come here and we teach them the uh, TPS fundamentals, the tools on how to uh, uh, capture current condition, uh, look for areas for improvement, and uh, we've had uh, 
good results and good feedback from the suppliers whenever we work with them on uh, having them uh, learn the TPS uh, methods and how they can apply it. And uh, it, it's a great working relationship. They're our partners and we all want to be successful. Great, thank you. Uh, and look into the future. Innovation and change seem to be happening more rapidly today due to advances in technology and globalization and things like that. How can Toyota respond to that? Uh, is, is it likely to change the Toyota production system? Well, you got to remember TPS originated from a little boy, Sakichi Toyota, uh, who wanted to make his mother's life easier while she was operating the loom. You know, um, TPS is based upon uh, human dignity and respect for people. If there is a way to make the lives of our team members and customers better, then we will do so. Toyota responds by funding a research and development division, which is always looking at new innovations, new technology. As for the Toyota production system, it doesn't change. It just gets enhanced. So, Technology has always been a big part of manufacturing. There's uh, always change, uh, improvements, uh, whether it be robotics, the uh, technology that goes into the vehicle. But TPS, the fundamentals don't change. We look at what are the ways that we can make improvements and how can we be more efficient and be better. It's still about uh, capturing the uh, current condition, trying to identify where there's uh, waste, areas for improvement, and then using the TPS tools that we learn to go and make that improvement. So whether we're making that improvement on a team member that's in the process doing everything manually, whether we're looking at uh, making that improvement on a robot that uh, works on its own and how we can make that robot's uh, motions uh, more efficient or improve the quality, uh, the TPS fundamentals are the same. It's still about making it better. So bring on technology. We love technology, but we can always work on it, and TPS will still be there. Thank you. Uh, other companies have tried to apply TPS and, and struggled with it. Uh, do you have any idea why this is? Well, change is a hard thing. If you've been doing something the same way over and over and over, um, you're going to tend to believe your way is the right way. We're all creatures of habit and at times have become hostage to routine. Applying TPS to an established company would require some persistence, uh, probably the same persistence as uh, Taiichi Ono, the father of TPS, who had to uh, implement Jadoka and just-in-time concepts back in his day on his production floor. The culture would have to change, and that's a big thing. And I don't know, sometimes it's a hard thing to do. You got to remember TPS wasn't born overnight. We have evolved over a hundred plus years and we train our team members the first day they step foot in here at TMMC uh, at orientation. So that's when, that's when it all begins for them. My experience is manufacturing is Toyota so I can't speak for what other companies and other businesses go through and mm -hmm. trying to change but what I can say here it's the culture. It's that mindset that's instilled in everyone. Making change is something that happens here uh, every day, you know, thousands of times a day in a plant like this. So because we have that culture, I, I don't see it as being something that's very difficult. TPS is very simple. The application of TPS is the difficult part. And a lot of that is because we get, as Larry mentioned, used to doing things in a certain way and to change is the difficult part of it. Um, with TPS, it's uh, that mindset of being open to change, understanding what your current condition is, and from that, seeing where you can make improvements. Uh, too often, uh, when people want to make change, they try to get from the start to the change that they want kind of all in one step. But TPS and making change is all about small increments. Making a small change here, fixing this problem, moving to the next problem, moving to the next problem. And that's not as easy as saying, we want to implement TPS. That's creating the culture and the mindset to get you there. And that's our strength. Our team members, 
are very engaged in making change and as an organization we promote making change and having team members provide input. What can organizations do to apply the TPS better? You know, we can preach TPS and talk about all its benefits, but if you don't have the commitment and persistence to see it through, it won't work. You will require complete buy-in from top-level management all the way down to the production floor. The good thing about TPS is that it's everyone's responsibility. My advice would be to chip away at, that, at the stone. Introduce aspects of TPS in doses that they can handle. Let them see the improvement. Let them understand it. And then stabilize it. Create the new standard. Then give a little bit more. If you go in too strong, guns a-blazing, it's going to be uh, likely overwhelming and it's uh, going to fail. We give team members the opportunity to make change all the time. But change can also be a disruption if it's not done properly. So when we make change, we need to make sure that uh, everyone agrees on that change and that that change becomes the new standard. And when we have a standard, one of the key points is that when we follow that standard, not only the person making the change, but everybody in the organization follows that standard when the change is made. And you got to remember too, the foundation of TPS is standardization. It starts at the bottom. Thank you. And uh, I've just got one more question, um, which is the people who are watching this video uh, may move on to careers in manufacturing or service operations. Uh, do you have any advice that you would like to give them as they do that? Uh, the goal of every uh, company is to make profit. I think if you owned a company, you'd want to make a profit. So whatever company you choose to work for, treat it as if it was yours. Uh, look for ways to improve and uh, improve operations and become more efficient. The success of the company you work for will in turn impact your personal growth and your professional careers. We all want long-term stable employment so we can secure our futures for a good life. My advice is be open to change, embrace teamwork, and be a team player yourself. Thank you. I found manufacturing is uh, exciting. It's, uh, I never thought I'd be in this when I graduated from school. It's proven to be uh, exciting, lots of challenge. It's uh, a great environment to, to work in with lots of opportunity. My recommendation, regardless of whether you go into manufacturing or any other type of uh, job, it's to really take the time to understand what your role in that organization and your work is and how you can make improvements. Uh, as long as you continuously keep on improving your, your job, uh, it comes with uh, satisfaction, it's rewarding, and uh, overall it gives you that job satisfaction and make you happy in life. And that's what it's all about. Well, Larry and Luis, uh, both of you, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me today. This is going to be shown to many students at the University of Waterloo and uh, may influence their activity in many companies in the future. So uh, what you've done is very valuable and thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank You're welcome. you.